Zato won! And you. <laughs> Zato is one of my favorite characters in Guilty Gear Strive, but he's also one of the most difficult to play. He's also just really weird. He's super cool, but he's weird. So a lot of people who want to pick him up don't know where to begin, and a lot of people who need to fight against him have no idea what they should be doing. So I hope this video can be helpful to people on both ends of the spectrum. I've already recorded this video once, but I was worried that the way I had it originally planned, it might not be useful to every type of player. I want this Zato guide to be able to help everyone, whether they want to learn how to fight Zato, how to play him from scratch, or they're just looking for some new advanced concepts to help them improve their own Zato. So this time, I decided I'm going to break this guide into sections. This entire first video is going to be all about getting you familiar with Zato. What does he do? What is he good at? How do you have to deal with certain situations from him? And I just want to get you guys familiar with all the tools that he has and some situations where you're going to use all of those. If you have a good idea of what his strengths are, then you know what you want to work towards when you're trying to play him, right? If he's really good in a certain situation, you're going to try and force that situation to come up. And just having an idea of those kinds of things is going to help you form a game plan with any character that you want to learn. But I also want to do a video all about Zato's offense, so we can talk about that in the future as well. We're going to cover his offense a little bit here, but there's a lot more to understand than what I'm going to break down in a basic video. And we might have some more advanced concepts in a future video as well. But this is going to be the video that gets you started. This is where I want to send everyone when they learn the character from scratch. So if you want to continue learning Guilty Gear Strive with me, if you're completely lost with where to begin with the game, altogether, I highly recommend you check out my beginner's guide to Guilty Gear Strive. I think it's an excellent place to begin, and hopefully it can help you guys out. And we're going to be doing so much more Guilty Gear and Dragon Ball Fighters on this channel in the future, so if you're interested in learning fighting games with me, subscribe to the channel or head over to my stream and ask me any questions you have there. All right, with that out of the way, let's talk about the basics. What does Zato do and how does he do it? So before I explain how Zato does what he does, I want everyone watching, whether you want to play Zato or whether you just want to fight against him better, I need everyone watching to understand one important dynamic that's always present in every match that Zato is a part of. Okay, so he can summon this little guy. This is Eddie. He's really cute, isn't he? Look how happy he is. He's clapping around. Look at him. Look how happy he is. That's Eddie, okay? When Eddie is summoned, Zato and Eddie together are one of the best characters in the game. Easily one of the best characters in the game. When Eddie is not summoned, or if he can't be summoned for some reason, like maybe he just got hit, Zato is easily one of the worst characters in the entire game. So this dynamic of understanding that he's either really, really good or really, really bad, depending on the situation, is really important. It'll let you know whether you need to advance and press your advantage because now is the time to beat him up while he's weak, or whether you need to chill out and try to deal with Eddie as best you can. So if you're ever completely lost regarding what you should be doing, just remember this. Zato wants to find opportunities to summon Eddie, and he wants to earn his advantage that way. And when he can't summon Eddie, when Eddie's gone, he wants to survive and waste as much time as possible, maybe by running away from you, maybe he'll try to keep you at bay with some of his far-reaching moves. If he does make you block, maybe he's going to spend as much meter as possible to kill as much time as possible so that he can get Eddie back and then be able to go back into his advantageous state. So Zato is always either trying to kill time and get Eddie back, or use Eddie to beat you up. So if you're ever fighting against Zato, and you're aware that Eddie is out of the equation because you just hit him or he just ran out of Eddie meter, which we'll talk about later, then that's when you need to press your advantage. At times, matchups with Zato feel like they're all about just recognizing who gets to press their advantage. And also, before we talk about how Zato does what he does, I want to talk about some of the cool things that he has access to when Eddie is available. And then I also want to show you some of the problems that he has when Eddie isn't available. And this will help you understand what is he really good at when he's his best self, when he has Eddie available, and what kind of issues can you exploit when he doesn't have Eddie available. And like I said, I want everyone who's watching this video to be able to get some use out of it, whether they're playing against Zato or whether they're playing as Zato. So with Eddie available, Zato has access to very long block strings, high low mix up. That's very rewarding. He also is going to have access to really rewarding throw mix-up because he's going to be able to combo his throw. That's a very unique thing in this game. And going to be able to do a lot of damage with it too. It's not just overheads that are going to be rewarding. Lows are also going to be rewarding. Really big damage from this. 
usually a wall break. Look at all of that. What the heck? And that's really something he just does really well. He has consistent high damage if Eddie is available from all of his basic mix-ups. So overheads, lows, and throws. And a lot of other characters are going to be spending meter in order to convert these things, right? And when you do that, you're going to have to roam cancel and you're going to be on meter cooldown. So you're not going to be building meter during the combo where when Zato combos from this stuff, he doesn't have to spend any meter at all, and he can build meter on top of it, which is a really, really big deal. Although with Zato, it is still important to understand what options you have when Eddie isn't available if you want to convert these things. And that seems fine. Not as good as what we saw before, but still fine. Zato is also going to have the ability to absorb enemy attacks with this move. And for a few seconds, he's just winning the game. For a few seconds, I'm invincible as long as I'm in the shield. I, nothing makes contact with me. I can just walk forward and I won't get hit. And I can get a very punishing combo here. Into good, good knockdown, good situation, back into a blender. Look at all that damage. <laughs> he also has the ability to control a lot of space all at once if Eddie's available. So Eddie can cover the ground for me. Look how far this goes. Look how far forward these drills can go without Eddie actually putting himself too much in danger because these are going to go out in his place. And while the, he's covering the ground, I could cover the air. While I'm on the ground, Eddie can cover the air for me. And then I can back him up after he makes contact with the opponent. And even when Zato doesn't get really good damage, he is going to get a fantastic knockdown situation where you can knock them down with a sweep or something, summon Eddie, and now Eddie is the one attacking the opponent. So I'm not putting myself at risk. I could be blocking. Zato can block. Eddie can be the one to attack the opponent. And this opens up a bunch of really unique mix-up situations, really good pressure, and it's just really safe. So let's say the opponent wakes up with a reversal. This is an invincible move that some characters have, and it's going to go through almost any attack I do hit me, and I'm forced with a lot of characters to hard bait it, wait for it to happen, and then get a punish. But I have to give up my turn in order to bait that, and that opens up the opportunity for the opponent to guess correctly and jump away, to backdash away, to mash and hit buttons and make me block them and get their turn started. But instead, I could just summon Eddie, have him meaty for me, Meaty just meaning attacking the opponent as soon as they wake up. There's other meanings for the word meaty, but that's typically what people mean, is attacking exactly when the opponent wakes up. Eddie's the one doing it. He's getting hit. I feel bad for my boy. He doesn't deserve that, but he's going to take the hit for me. I'm going to be able to still be safe, and then I can still get a punish on the opponent. You know, it won't be as good of a punish because Eddie's going to be out for a while, but even something this simple... And then getting a knockdown afterwards is really nice. You could safe jump after that. If you don't know what a safe jump is, don't worry about it. It's not super important. There's, op there's ways to optimize just by going straight into super and doing all the damage at once right away. But the point of being able to keep your turn without actually having to hard bait something like that, it's really, really nice. You don't have to call it out. So those are some of the really cool things and really strong things about Zato when he has Eddie available. But some of the bad things is kind of what we just talked about, where he does very little damage on his own. So this first hit when you knock someone down is usually not a very good hit. It's usually not a lot of damage. It's not super rewarding. But even though we're not doing too much damage, we get to summon Eddie and our next opportunity is going to be much more rewarding. So what Zato seems to get a lot of the time, unless you get certain hits that are always pretty rewarding, is he gets the opportunity to get a lot of damage on the second hit. Probably more damage than most characters would get from the first hit in the first place. But if you don't have Eddie available and you get a hit, you're going to do little damage and the opportunity afterwards isn't going to be super good. So by himself, Zato is one of the least scary characters in the game because even if he does hit you, it's not going to be super rewarding. He also has difficulty converting his momentum into a good knockdown. So a lot of the hits he's going to get when he's on his own are going to combo into this move right here. It's going to be this drill. This is called Invite Hell. It's down, down heavy. And you see how even though this kind of knocks the opponent down, they get to go full screen. And Zato can't cover this amount of distance all by himself. He can't get a good meaty. He can't do something to the opponent to stop them from jumping away and wake up. He doesn't have super good options at this point, unless he's in the corner. If he's in the corner, then of course he's going to be able to get a good knockdown. But his momentum by himself, especially when he doesn't have Eddie to help mix up afterwards, isn't going to be the best. He also just has really slow attacks and weak defensive options. So most characters in this game have faster than a six frame jab, but Zato's fastest move is six frames. He doesn't have anything faster than this unless you count his throw, 
but everyone has a throw and that's super duper fast in this game. But if you're ever in a position where you need to mash to fight your way out, he doesn't have super good options to do that. He also doesn't have a unique reversal. He doesn't have a reversal super and he doesn't have a reversal special move. So a character like Kai might be able to fight his way out with an invincible reversal, even though it's a really big risk if I block it and I can, I can destroy him if I block it. But he has that option. And that's really important to have some kind of option like that. It really helps to be able to throw that in just once in a while to keep the opponent honest. And Zato does not have anything like this. He does not have an invincible reversal at all. Some characters in the game are very oppressive when they get in, Zato ironically being one of them. So he actually wouldn't defend against himself very well, but he's lacking defensive options. He doesn't have good buttons to fight his way out, and he doesn't have a reversal. Even this super, which we thought was a reversal before, is no longer a reversal. So he, uh, he just kind of has to deal with that, you know? He's going to have to rely on some of the universal mechanics like yellow Roman cancel in order to fight his way out. He also just has really weak pressure and low damage when he's on his own. So even if he does catch someone mashing, like let's set the opponent to counterattack here on block. Let's say we want to stop someone who's mashing their own jab and we're using our jab. This is our best frame trap. That's our best frame trap. And that's all the damage we get from it. That's pretty much it. If we start our pressure with a close slash, we're going to be able to get more damage than that. If we could frame trap into a more rewarding move, we could combo into our command grab from the stagger. That only happens on counter hit. That's really nice. But it's still not a super good knockdown, and it's nothing compared to what we would get if we had Eddie available. If we had Eddie available, we would get all of this. Actually, it could probably be optimized even more than that. So there's a huge difference, right? This is a huge difference. He also has some unique issues like how his jab doesn't combo into anything meaningful. If you're close enough, you could combo into his forward punch. Doesn't work that far away. Doesn't work that far away. If we're point blank, it's going to work. But his forward punch doesn't combo into anything either. So he really just gets nothing from jabs. His kicks don't lead into a whole lot, but the knockdown is nice. If you have Eddie available, the knockdown is going to be very good because we're going to have a really good situation if we can knock someone down and put Eddie right next to them. But again, we're talking about if Eddie isn't available, it's just not that scary. Look at how little damage this is. That's almost nothing. That's almost nothing. This is so little. It's really not a deterrent from someone disrespecting you, in my opinion. All right, so those are kind of the pros and cons I want you to understand about playing him. And if any of that interested you, if you're okay with working around the negatives, he could be a really fun character to play. Okay, so now that I've given you guys a taste of what he can do and what his problems are, let's actually talk about how he does it because he's one of the weirdest characters in the game. He's one of the hardest characters to play in the game. How does he work? And I, I want to try to explain this in a way that makes it seem not that hard. It might come across very difficult, but I promise with just a little bit of practice, you can get used to it. If you think you could get used to the idea of patting your head and rubbing your belly at the same time, right? That's kind of awkward, right? In fact, if I had to switch hands, I don't think I could do it. But okay, there we go. T took me a second, right? Um, it's awkward. It's not muscle memory that you're used to but you can definitely learn it if you really wanted to. And Zato feels like that. He's uh, he's weird, he's unintuitive if you played other fighting game characters before, but you've never played a puppet character like him before. But I promise you, you can learn it if you want to. Okay, so let's first talk about how to summon Eddie. Uh, you can summon him and have him just chill out and do nothing by hitting quarter circle back heavy slash. So quarter circle back heavy slash, you can see my inputs at the top left if you want. If you do it again, you will unsummon him. You see he has an Eddie gauge right above my meter. That goes down the longer he's out, and every time he uses an attack, it continues to go down. Different attacks make it drop faster, and when he runs out of gauge, so like let's have him use two attacks here. That's usually all it takes. It'll turn red, that's how you know you ran out completely, and it takes a while to come back. It's already back, so it's not actually that bad, but look at how fast it comes back if we unsummon him. It's pretty much instant, and we can summon him again. So we can use him, unsummon him, summon him again, unsummon him, summon him again. It's really, really fast. So you're always incentivized to unsummon him properly instead of let him run out all on his own. There are some times where I'm willing to let him run out, but remember, once you have that happen, you're probably running away or trying to kill time until you can get him back. Okay, so quarter circle back heavy is the basic way of summoning and unsummoning him. But you can also summon him and have him do any of his four attacks just by importing quarter circle forward and a button. Everything except for dust has an attack associated with it. So quarter circle forward dust does nothing. This does nothing. But quarter circle forward punch 
gives him this move where he punches twice quarter circle forward kick summons him immediately and summons the drills and now he's out and you can do whatever you want you can still unsummon him quarter circle forward slash is the big frog i think everyone loves this one this one is really really good quarter circle forward heavy is called oppose it is the wall it is the shield it uses your whole gauge but it's really really good i call it the tickle monster because a friend of mine called it that once and i love it it's just really funny i can't unsee the tickle monster so that's what it is to me forever i hope i hope that becomes a thing long term really <laughs> And all of these are going to have different uses, right? So the punch is going to use less eddy gauge. We can actually do this three times, where with other moves, we can only do two. We could do two of these drills, or we could do two of the frogs, or any combination of these, right? So working in the punch at least at one point is going to let you use three moves instead of two, which is really, really nice. You can always use an eddy move as long as you have just a sliver of meter left. So I'm going to pause it right here. There's very little left. When I unpause, there's basically no meter left. And if I hit heavy slash, he's going to be able to go into the tickle monster. We'll talk about how to use him without having to commit to a quarter circle motion, because this is kind of a big commitment. Look at Zato. He's always doing something. He's like clapping his hands. He's snapping his fingers and summoning him. This is a commitment on Zato's part. He's doing something and Eddie's doing something. We want them to be doing stuff separately, and that's where the strength of this character is. All right, so how do we move Eddie? Well, it's the same way we move Zato, right? If we walk a direction, Eddie's going to walk that way. If we walk the other direction, Eddie's going to walk that way. Eddie is much faster than us, though. You see how much quicker he is. So Eddie also moves regardless of whether we're crouching, where Zato will not walk backwards if I hit down back. You can see my inputs. I'm holding down back. I'm not walking backwards, crawling backwards, but if I hold straight back, I'll walk down back i'm not walking but with eddie he will walk if i'm holding down back he won't walk if i'm holding down he will if i walk down back down forward down back down forward forward back right so we have some control over him in a way that we don't with zato another way that we can move eddie around without having to commit to moving zato around is to simply do an attack so if we do something with zato we can move eddie while we're doing something and before we recover Eddie is still able to move, okay? This is going to come into play into combos a lot because a lot of the time, Zato is going to be busy attacking people, doing something like that. And while Zato is attacking them, we're going to be repositioning Eddie. We're going to be holding down forward in order to move Eddie forward or just holding forward in order to move Eddie where we want him to go. Okay, we already talked about the Eddie gauge a little bit. Let's talk about the most important part of controlling Eddie, and that is making him attack without doing a quarter circle motion. Summoning him with a quarter circle motion is always fine. And another thing about this is you can cancel one of his attacks and do a different one if you do another quarter circle. So instead of doing two punches, we can cancel the first punch into the drills. We can cancel it into the tickle monster. We can cancel the tickle monster into the frog and any combination of these, right? This is going to come into play in a lot of higher level situations in the game, but it's not super important when you're starting out. But if we want to make Eddie attack without having to commit to something, all we have to do is release a button, which sounds weird. So if we have Eddie out, if we push a button, look at my inputs here, I'm going to hit punch. When I push the button, Zato does something. When I release the button, Eddie does something. So this is called negative edging. Positive edging is pushing the button. Negative edging is releasing the button. You can see my inputs at the top there. The P is lit up because I'm holding the button. And when I let go of it, it goes away. And you'll see when I let go of punch, Eddie does his punch move. When I hit my kick, Zato does the kick. When I let go of kick, Eddie does his kick move, which is the drill. Same thing with slash. Hold slash, let go of slash. Hold heavy slash, let go of heavy slash. It's really that simple. This is probably the most complicated thing about the character. It's just weird trying to hold buttons because if you just tap them and let go right away, you're both going to be doing something at the same time. And we don't always want to be doing that. We don't always want to have to commit to these kinds of things. We don't want to have them be synced up perfectly. Kind of the strength of the character is letting Zato and Eddie take turns attacking the opponent, right? Because if I do some moves with Zato, I'm not at advantage afterwards. If I do this and then try to attack again, Kai is the one at advantage here. But let's say I have Eddie attack for me as soon as I'm done. He's backing me up, and then I can attack when Eddie's done. So as long as I'm careful with which buttons I'm holding and letting go, we can take turns this way and keep backing each other up. And that's what lets our block strings go on for so long. Okay, another thing I want to really quickly go over is what happens when Eddie gets hit, what happens if Zato gets hit. So if Eddie gets hit, 
he's just gone. Eddie's gone. It takes him a while to come back. The full meter depletes immediately and we have to deal with that. So goodbye, Eddie. You'll be back in a few seconds. However, if Eddie is safe, if he's fine, but I block something, he goes away, but the gauge is still full. So we can summon him immediately again afterwards. So let's summon him, block a move. Now we can summon him again. So it's better for Zato to block than for Eddie to get hit. But either way, Eddie goes away and that's a big deal for the opponent. And they can probably press that advantage and maybe run you over. Also on the note of backing each other up, right? Zato backs Eddie up, Eddie backs Zato up. This is only something that's really gonna be able to happen for you if you're relatively close to the opponent. Right? So right now I have the opponent set to mash on block and he's going to be able to hit Eddie right afterwards. So I have to get there in time to protect him. And if I do, I can get rewarded with a pretty decent combo as long as I don't mess it up. Let's see if we can get some more damage from this. And this is all from protecting our little guy. <laughs> but what if we're not close enough to actually back him up? We're not always going to be able to get there in time to save him. And if we can't get there in time to save him, the best thing the opponent can do is probably hit Crouch Punch with most characters anyway, because it's really fast. It's gonna check Eddie really quickly. It's gonna get rid of him unless we like unsummon him. It's gonna force us basically to unsummon Eddie to keep him safe, which means now he's gone. He's not on the screen anymore. And it might give them a chance to run up and get their turn started. Or we could cancel into the Tickle Monster in order to keep him safe, but then we're gonna lose our full Eddie gauge anyway. So even though Eddie can go full screen, he probably doesn't always need to. It's best if we can actually get there in time to back him up. All right. Okay, so the most common question I've gotten about Zato is what button layout should we use? Someone might say like, well, I don't know what button layout to use because I can never seem to control Eddie properly. How do I control him better? Is there a button layout that helps with that? There isn't one perfect one, but I wanna be able to help you pick the one that's right for you. Keep in mind that we need to be able to press a button hold that button and do other things too. So I'm still holding kick and maybe I want to do something with punch with Eddie. Let's say I want to summon Eddie and I want to be able to do a frog in a few seconds. So I'll let go of the slash button to do the frog. And a way I can do this is that when I summon him, quarter circle back heavy, I'm going to also hold the S button really quickly. Now, when I let go of the S button, the frog will happen. And that gives me a lot of control over it, right? I can summon him, I can move him around. And whenever I let it go, we're good to go but we have to be able to hold this button the whole time while I'm doing everything else. I have to be able to hold every button that I press until I let go of that button that I want him to do. And if you have multiple buttons on your controller, whatever type of controller you use, where you have a single finger that needs to go between one button and a different button, then when you do that, you're gonna have to let go of the first button to swap over, right? We want to avoid that if we're playing Zotto. So pad players might have a little bit of trouble at first because on a pad, you have a thumb that's responsible for four buttons on the front. And it can be really difficult to press one while holding a different one. It can be difficult to continue holding multiple buttons and still press other buttons. So what you can do is you can actually map the primary buttons you use to the shoulders, right? That's weird. I know that's weird. That's super weird. The idea of playing a fighting game where these are your four buttons, your four main buttons, is strange. But if you want to play Zotto, it might be a good idea. There are some pad Zotto players out there. I think Nokami plays pad and he does stream super regularly. And I know Beautiful Dude is a very long-term Zotto player who takes pride in the fact that he is a pad Zotto player. So he's a great person to ask as well. I'll have links to them both down below the video. But if you want to play something else, if you want to play either a fight stick or a hitbox, what I'm going to say is going to be the same for pretty much both of them. I play on hitbox. I used to play on fight stick. I played fight stick for eight years. I played fight stick the first time I played Zotto in Guilty Gear Exerd, but I play hitbox now for, you know, ergonomic reasons. I had some shoulder problems that persisted from when I used to be a competitive swimmer. But anyway, I have a hitbox style controller now. What I'd recommend, because it's all these buttons on the right here, these eight buttons. What I would recommend is having some kind of a setup that lets you have your hand comfortably resting on all of the buttons that you want to press. Kind of struggle to show this right here, but I want to be able to lay my hand flat on the top four buttons on the controller, one on the bottom, and I want to never have to pick those fingers up. That's going to let me press any button I want and hold any button I want without having to ever take that finger up and press a different one. So the way my hand lays on my controller I use the top four buttons and then one on the bottom and I just rest it like that and I'm good to go. And what I'll do is I have on the top row punch, kick, slash, dust, 
And then on the bottom row, I have Heavy Slash. And I also have a dash macro mapped, but I don't always use it because sometimes I would have to pick up a finger to use it. And with Zato, sometimes that's a bad thing, but usually it's good to have a dash macro mapped to your character, no matter what character you play. You don't have to go with this exact setup, but the idea of making it so that you can press and hold any button you want without having to pick it up is what's important here. Hopefully that helps with some of the confusion about controller setups with Zato. He's probably the only character in the game that is going to really benefit if you change up your controller setup. I'm committed to this setup now forever for Guilty Gear because I really want to play Zato long term and I want to pick a controller setup that's going to make that consistent and easy for me. This might be one of the biggest deal breakers for people who are interested in playing him. Using a new controller layout is always a difficult thing to do. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about what Zato can do. Let's stop talking about little Eddie for a little while. We don't we don't need to talk about Eddie. Let's put him away. He's fine. He's chilling. What about Zato? Well, first of all, he can fly. He can fly. Pretty cool. For a limited time. He can't do it forever. He can't just hover around and like never come back to Earth. But for a limited time only, he can fly. He can also dash in any direction he wants in the air. He can dash forward and then fly. And he can still continue to control his momentum. He can dash backwards and fly. He can just go down. He can go straight down. So you do this by dashing in any direction. You have to double tap the direction you want to go. Double tap up, double tap forward. What I recommend is having the dash macro map to a button because being able to just really quickly tap the direction you want and fly in that direction is really, really nice. And Zato has so much control over his air movement. Even though he's not the fastest character in the game, he's able to outmaneuver a lot of characters' anti-airs. So instead of just air dashing on the opponent and potentially getting anti-aired right away, you could look like you're going to do that, hover for a second, and then wait for their anti-air to miss and fall on them and hit them that way. It's really, really nice. So his basic mix-up when he's all on his own is he can throw you with forward plus dust or back plus dust, whichever. This is universal. Every character has this. Or he can command grab you with this move. So it's forward, down, down, forward. So dragon punch motion plus slash. The knockdown isn't as good as a regular throw, but it's okay. It's not very good. Does more damage. And what's really good about this command grab is it completely refills your Eddie gauge. So let's say we're using Eddie and we use up the full Eddie gauge, okay? And then we command grab. Look at the gauge, it's refilling the whole time. The command grab takes so long that we get Eddie back when it's over. And that's really, really nice means we're going to be able to summon him again and have a good time. So that's really the big benefit of the command grab. His other mix-ups, obviously he does have a normal dust overhead. If you hold it, it's really slow, but you can get a combo. You can launch and get a combo, or you can just tap it. It'll be a lot faster and you can combo with a Roman cancel, but you're not going to get a whole lot of damage from this. Not amazing, not amazing. Not terrible, but not amazing. He also has a unique overhead, his forward kick, but this one seems very obvious. I feel like this one is really, really slow. It doesn't hit people too often, but it's still nice that he has it. This is something you can cancel from jab where you actually can't cancel his jab into his dust. So sometimes this is gonna be the only thing you have available if you want an overhead. Without meter, you're not gonna be able to combo with either of these unless Eddie's available though. And as I talked about for so long earlier, if you have Eddie available, all of these mix-ups are going to become significantly more rewarding. Nice, okay. Let's talk about Zato's anti-airs really quick because that's a really, really important part of the game. Every character has a universal anti-air with forward plus punch. Zato's is not the best. His is probably one of the worst ones in the game, but forward plus punch is still a pretty consistent anti-air with every character. So if I want to anti-air someone, this is something I can typically do on reaction to a situation. I don't really get much for it. All I really get to do is combo into this drill move down, down heavy. And the knockdown isn't great either. So the situation isn't super good. What I like to do if I ever hit with this move is to just summon Eddie. Just cancel into the Eddie summon and let Eddie just get up there and give me my turn. And now we can go for a mix up. We can have a good time. So what I like to do is I just like to summon Eddie and have him run out there and take our turn for us. We lose a little bit of guaranteed damage this way, but it's not that much. And what we get for it is a really good situation where now we can go for high low mix up. We could go for a throw and whatever we do is going to be really rewarding here. So this is exactly what I was talking about earlier, where Zato doesn't usually get a lot of damage from his first hit, but his second hit is going to be really, really scary and do a lot of damage. Also, every character has an air throw. If you hit forward dust or back dust in the air, this is going to work um, as long as you're sort of close to the opponent. 
This takes a while to get used to. In Guilty Gear, once you start air throwing people, especially in the old games, it felt amazing. It's just, you know, it's so good. It's so good. It feels great. The knockdown from air throw mid-screen isn't amazing, but it's actually a really consistent anti-air depending on the situation. In the corner, like let's say our backs is to the corner and someone jumps, we can actually get a really good knockdown this way. We can summon Eddie, we can start doing whatever we want. It's really, really nice. And also Zato has his down heavy. This move is not upper body invincible. This move does not have priority against moves in the air. This move isn't as good as a 6P, a forward punch, where you can do it really late and still be fine. If I wait until I see him jump, sometimes we'll trade, sometimes we'll win, sometimes I'll be too late and they'll hit me and they'll get their turn started. But what is really good about this move is if it does work and it doesn't trade, it is a really, really good combo starter because it pops them up for a long time. It gives you time to summon Eddie here. And the combo you get from this is just so, so, so good. And there's a lot of options here. And this is so messed up. Just that whole situation is so good. So you have a choice between a very consistent anti-air that gives you an opportunity to get really good damage or an inconsistent anti-air that is guaranteed big damage if it hits. So pick your poison. A lot of the time it's better to not anti-air at all actually. So you might want to reposition yourself so that if you do block the opponent, like let's say you dash and block really quickly, now they're really close to you most of the time and you can throw them. Or you could try to hit them out of the air and that's really nice too. Sometimes when someone's trying to escape the corner, you can air to air them really quick and actually get a pretty good combo even if you don't have Eddie available. And even mid-screen, if you don't want to try to extend into a good combo because it's really hard mid-screen, it might not be worth it, you can still cancel into flight. You can kind of jump on the opponent as they recover, as they get up off the ground. And I really like doing this. So I can just fly, wait for them to get up, and now they have to block. And if they did block, I could maybe go for a grab afterwards. And if I saw they got hit, I could combo into my sweep and it's party time because this is a really good situation for Zato. Let's talk about Zato's pokes and the one that comes to mind is his crouching slash. This goes really far. It's not the farthest move in the game. It doesn't have the best priority in the game and it's kind of slow, but it goes far. It goes far and it's pretty good. So if it hits the opponent and you cancel into this move, it's not going to combo. It just barely doesn't combo. If we set the opponent to guard after the first hit, this means if the combo drops, he's going to block it and he blocks it. So it's not a true combo, but if this happens to hit counter hit, then this is gonna combo. And if the opponent tries to mash in this situation, right, they try to hit a button, this will stop them from hitting a button. And that's really nice. If we can stop them from hitting buttons, we can get away with summoning Eddie. We don't want Eddie to get smacked whenever we go to try to summon him. This special move is gonna be your best friend down, down heavy. We're gonna use it a lot so we can check people, make them not wanna hit buttons. And then we can get away with summoning Eddie and starting our turn. We'll talk about that dynamic a little bit. You want to mix up the way you summon him because sometimes people are going to be able to attack him in a specific way, but if you summon him a different way, he's going to be relatively safe and be able to get your turn started that way. But the point being, you can't just cancel into the drill off the poke. Sometimes you should summon Eddie. And if Eddie's getting hit a lot or they're getting away a lot of the time when you try to summon him, go back to using the drill. His air attacks are also pretty decent. I really like his jump kick. It seems like his best air to air. It goes downward, so sometimes you might want to super jump in order to make sure that the height is good. So you can do that by tapping down and up really quickly. You can look at my inputs there. Down, up, down, up, super jump, right? And you can do this in any direction you want. Down, up, forward, down, up, back. And this is generally just a really good air to air. It's also pretty good air to ground because it goes pretty deep. You're going to be using it a lot for that. I like his jump slash, this move, because it goes a little bit in every direction. If you aren't sure whether you're going to cross them up or not, or stay on the same side, this is a good one to use because you don't want your kick to miss. You don't want, let's say you're worried about passing the opponent on accident. You don't want your attack to miss and then they might throw you as soon as you land and that's really bad because now they're going to get their whole turn started. So if I'm ever worried about that, using jump slash makes my jump in a lot more consistent. Even if I happen to pass the opponent, there's a solid chance that this move is still going to make contact because it's a little bit 360 degrees around. I also really like his jump heavy slash a lot. This move, it goes down to up. It's really active and the priority on it is actually pretty good. Once I started using this move more, I ended up winning a lot more situations where I was getting very easily anti-aired before. And last, his jump dust. I haven't talked about his jump punch yet because it's a really big commitment. I don't like this move that much. It has a time, it has a place, it's three hits, 
but other characters jump punches are really fast like he can recover right away it's like not a commitment at all he can block right away he can air dash he can double jump it's you know but with zato it's such a big commitment it takes so long for me to be able to do something afterwards a lot of the time i get hit like the moment i miss this move all right and one more is his jump dust this move as long as you aren't hitting forward or back because again back dust is throw forward dust is throw but jump neutral dust or jump up back dust you know something like that jump dust is really cool it's basically an extra air dash and it has a hitbox on it so you can do this and still dash around so you can kind of maneuver yourself with this and you can still air dash back if you want you can maneuver over someone fly hover for a second and then fall with an attack to kind of bait out their anteriors and i really like doing this it really does get the job done sometimes it's going to force people to want to try to like delay their anteriors or maybe run away or maybe they'll try to air throw you instead but it's going to force people to mix up the way that they anti-air you and that's a really big deal also another cool thing about flight with Zato is like yes you can fly in every direction if you want to get back down to the ground really fast all you got to do is faultless defense really quick that's back and then any two buttons besides for dust if you combine a button with dust you always get a burst don't waste your burst for no reason bursts are too important you don't want to lose it but if you ever want to really quickly drop to the ground all you got to do is really quickly tap back and two buttons to faultless defense and you're down to the ground i really like doing this with Zato. i think it has a lot of practical uses with him it also just looks really funny <laughs> it's like he's flying <laughs> <Whee>! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try and rapid fire through some of these so we can get through it a little bit quicker. So back to his grounded moves, he has a few low attacks. So both of his kicks, his standing kick and his crouching kick and his sweep, which is down dust, are all lows. You're not going to get a lot of reward for these normally on regular hit, but they are lows. The sweep goes not super far, but not too short. It's manageable. I think the kick and the sweep go pretty much the same distance. And as we mentioned before, sweeping someone really gives you a really good knockdown and puts you in a really good situation. Also, I know we talked about his forward punch earlier as an anti-air, but it's also a good counter poke. If someone's using an attack that doesn't go along the ground, this move will pretty much always beat it. And the reason for this is really interesting because forward punch, although it is an anti-air, it doesn't actually make you invincible to air attacks. What it does is it shrinks your entire character and puts you inside your shoes. Does that make sense? <laughs> Every character in a fighting game has a hurt box. It's like a it's like a square on the screen that you can't see. And if someone hits that square, you get hit. That's how it works. If they hit that square, you take damage. And when you use a forward punch with every character in the game, that square goes from taking up your entire character to just taking up your shoes. So you're going under the opponent's jumping attack and you're hitting them at the same time. And because we're shrinking under stuff and we're basically going along the ground, because our entire character is going inside of our shoes, we're underneath, we're underneath Kai's attack right here. It'll just go straight through us most of the time and it will not make contact with us. I'm trying to have it like clearly whiff for a second here. Yeah. And because Kai's sword can get hit, the game registers the sword as part of his hurt box, we can hit the sword. But if someone wants to use a move that goes along the ground, this isn't gonna work against that because they're hitting our shoes. We are in our shoes. <laughs> it's the best way I can put it. It's the best way I can put it. This is gonna be the same for every character in the game, by the way. Everyone's forward punch is gonna do this. We already talked about Zato having a second overhead with his forward plus kick. He also has a little hop move with forward plus heavy slash. I'm not super sure what the best way to use this is. It's not advantageous on blocks, so you can't just do it and then go for mix up, even though it kind of looks like you can because you can cancel into flying. So you might wanna like go for an extra overhead there. This move is not an overhead, by the way. So it looks like we could get this kind of high-low mix-up with it where we either fly to the ground or fly straight on them and go for an overhead. But we'd probably need Eddie there to fill our gaps for us and then we can go for that mix-up. I don't use this a lot. One thing that it can do is it can go over stuff that's going along the ground because we're not on the ground, we're in the air, right? So we can get around stuff that the opponent is doing and then potentially get our turn started. Also his punches, I haven't talked about these much yet because they're really slow. They're really slow. His fastest button is a lot slower than most characters fastest button. So his punches aren't super great for that, but they do have pretty good range compared to other characters. So we could probably find a spacing where Kai's punch doesn't reach us, but we can reach him. So that's kind of the benefit of it. But as we covered earlier, this doesn't combo into anything. So if you do happen to hit someone with a punch, you're either going to try to hit them afterwards with a drill right away. 
or you're going to maybe summon Eddie and get your turn started, or you could Roman cancel and get a combo, okay? And this is what's so good about Roman cancels because you can combo from things that normally you wouldn't be able to get a combo from. And we haven't talked about his slash buttons yet. Close slash is really nice. I think it's really good. We can get good frame traps from this afterwards because we can cancel into either sweep at a really delayed time, or we can do a delayed cancel into his heavy slash and both of these will blow up the opponent for mashing. That's really, really good. And if they don't want to mash, now we can throw them. Now we can command grab them. Now we can summon Eddie and get our turn started. And then we can throw them or go for a high-low mix-up or something, right? So having options to discourage people from mashing is really, really important so that then you can do the really fun stuff. All right, we also haven't talked about Zato's special moves yet. He has Invite Hell. This is Down Down Heavy. We talked about this. This is a really good move, but it's not a low. It actually used to be a low in previous games. I don't want to like get your hopes up with that now. Um, and the knockdown isn't super good when it does hit the opponent because it pushes them really far away. In the corner, that's not a very big deal. That's totally fine. But mid-screen, knocking them down really far away kind of stinks. But you're going to have to get used to using this move because it's his only special move that's safe on block. It's the only special move you're going to have that's going to frame trap. It's going to discourage someone from mashing in a lot of situations like after this move. We talked about his command grab already, and we talked about how it is going to refill our full Eddie gauge. So anytime we can summon Eddie and go for a bunch of mix-ups, and we're worried about him being completely gone when we're done, if we can get a command grab off, we'll get Eddie back, and we can summon him again. He also has this move, which we have not shown much yet. This is Drunkard Shade. It's quarter circle back slash, quarter circle back slash, and this is really really cool this move is one of the most interesting ones in the entire game in my opinion first of all it reflects projectiles which is super cool so if you can react to a projectile you can do this get a hit and maybe get your turn started afterwards or you can roman cancel it and then just combo off their own projectile knock them down get your turn started with eddie have a great time and the slower someone's projectile is the easier it's going to be to react to it with this so really slow stuff you can just run up and do it probably get a hit that way but there is actually another reason to use Drunkard Shade. You can't use it to reflect projectiles against characters that don't have projectiles. So what can you use it for against everyone else? Well, it's going to always shove Eddie to the other side of the screen, which is really, really cool. And he can act very fast afterwards. You can shove Eddie away and have him attack super quick from behind the opponent. Or it's just a way to cancel something that you're doing. So normally the Tickle Monster uses your entire Eddie gauge. It's gone. I got to wait for it to come back now. That really stinks. I want to use Eddie, but I got to wait but you can cancel it into Junkard Shade, and then you can start using Eddie again. It stops the gauge from going down, and you still got a few seconds of getting to use the Tickle Monster before then. And this is really cool for some combos when the Tickle Monster comes into play, for example, where normally this is probably what I would get if I didn't Junkard Shade, which is still good. It's still good, but the knockdown's not great. Notice how he's full screen here. If we use Junkard Shade though, we can then send him behind the opponent, and get a much better combo. And this is just so much better. This is so much better. We could have done more there too, actually. It also has some interesting uses in knockdowns to kind of get Eddie behind the opponent, which is really, really cool, which can also let us go for some sandwich mix-ups, which are really cool. We could talk about that in the next video. All right, moving on to break the law. We have not shown this yet at all. We can go underground. And when we're underground, we're completely invincible to everything on the screen but you can get hit before you go underground for a second and as you're coming up out of the ground. And the longer you hold it, the longer your recovery is. So if I do it just for a second, not that big of a deal, not that big of a deal. If I hold it for like three seconds and then it forces me to come up, it takes a lot longer and I can get counter hit as I'm recovering. I could, I could just get exploded if someone hits me right as I come up. So I don't like using this move very much unless I have meter to Roman cancel, keep myself safe. I can just purple RC, and we're all good to go. And we could even kind of like go under someone and then immediately cancel the Roman cancel into a throw. It seems to work for me pretty well. I don't like using this too much, but Break the Law does have some pretty unique uses and it actually gets used for some really cool mix-ups too. I don't want to focus on it too much here because I don't think it's super important, but there are some interesting things you can do. Like normally when we use Invite Hell, it's not advantageous for us, but we're safe. We're, we're safe when we use it, but we don't have an advantage when we use it. But if we knock the opponent down, cancel and to break the law, and then invite hell, it hits really late, which means we've had more time to recover at that point, which means we recover before the opponent, which means we're at advantage. So this is just kind of an easy auto time setup 
to make sure that you're at advantage after you knock them down. And then if they want to hit a button, we're going to be able to hit them first. Or if they start respecting us because they don't want to hit a button here, we can run up and command grab them. So it gives them some extra options if Eddie ever isn't available and you still want to have something resembling offense. Okay, I want to really quickly do a refresher on Eddie's moves. So Eddie, the little guy, he's got the punch. It does not use that much gauge. You can get a few of these off, which is really good. So the benefit of the punch is it's fast and it doesn't use that much gauge. The downside of the punch is that there's a gap between the two hits. If the opponent is set to guard after getting hit, you'll see this does not combo. Both of these hits don't combo. If we want a combo from this, we have to fill that gap between those two hits. And now the second hit's going to connect. Or it needs to hit the opponent during certain counter hits, or it needs to hit in certain air combos. So if it hits the opponent just off the ground, not touching the ground, but close to the ground, now both hits are going to connect. And this is going to happen a lot after you do a sweep. And it's going to let us get a really good combo here. Another thing that can happen is we can anti-air non-counter hit. If we ever hit with this move and we don't counter hit, we can summon Eddie and start holding punch. You see him holding punch at the top left and then let it go right before they hit the ground. And this, if we do it right, is going to juggle the opponent and give us a good combo. Very nice. Another problem with this move is that because there's that gap between the two hits, it's not close enough for us to always get a combo from it. It's also not close enough to stop the opponent from jumping out a lot of the time, especially if we're far away. So they can jump between the two hits. So how do we stop this? We're gonna have to cancel it into the frog to chase them back down to the ground. And if we do that, then we're gonna have tons of extra blocks done because when you block a move in the air, you are blocking for so much longer than normal. And that is going to let us get our turn started and really just get the ball rolling so we can do whatever we want. If they block the frog at that point, we could run up, we could do a grab, we could go for a frame trap, we could go for a low, we could go for an overhead, whatever. All right, the drills, again, these are pretty good neutral. They go pretty far. You can just summon this. And it's, uh, it's kind of a shield of spikes in front of you. They're going to be forced to kind of approach you in the air. You could maybe protect Eddie while that's going on and then have him protect you afterwards. In pressure, it's a lot of blocks and it pushes the opponent really far, but it does use a lot of eddy gauge. And if it happens to hit the opponent, it always puts them off the ground, which sometimes is awkward. And a lot of the time you might run up and try to combo. And if you attack them too soon, the last thing to hit them is going to be the last spike, not actually your attack. You want your attack to be the last thing that hits them here. And then you can combo. So just be patient if you ever see that the spikes hit the opponent. All right, let's talk about the frog quarter circle forward slash. This move is great. I love this move. It's great for catching people out of the air, but it's actually not as good for pressure as you might think because it actually doesn't hit crouching opponents on the way up. On the way down, the frog can hit them, but it doesn't hit crouching opponents on the way up. And this is one of the reasons I suggest that if someone ever blocks Eddie full screen for them to mash with a crouching punch because a crouching punch is going to be completely safe to this move. It's going to not be a super committal move. You're going to recover pretty fast after you hit Eddie. But obviously the frog is super valuable for combos because it's going to bring him up. It's going to bring him down. It's super easy to make work. As long as you can combo into it, you're good. And what I really like to do is I like to combo my dust, uncharged dust into this move. As long as you time it right, dust is going to combo into this move because dust, when you hit them, forces them into a standing state for a second. So you can always combo into this move with it, which is really nice. And if they block a dust, it's an overhead. So they had to have blocked it standing, right? That means that if I dust, I can get a true block string into this. I can actually get a mix up from this when otherwise I wouldn't be able to. This is not exactly the same for his other overhead because his other one does not force the opponent to be standing after it hits the opponent. So you could hit them and then the frog will just miss on the way up. Because if you hit with this move, it's because they were crouching. And if they're crouching, then the frog can't hit them. So you got to think about these kinds of things. All right, and revisiting the tickle monster really quick. This is the I'm winning the game for three seconds move because as long as this is out, you're basically safe inside of it. They can run up and throw you, which is good for them, but I could also just like hit a button and stop them on the way in. And I'm not scared to hit that button because I have the tickle monster to keep me safe, right? So the best thing for the other person to do is actually just wait for it to go away because it's going to use up my entire gauge and it's going to force me to take a risk like sending him away with the drunkard shade or 
canceling them into something else. But when you do either of these two things, the tickle monster actually goes away. So that means I'm no longer protected. So if I try to send him away with a Junker Shade, now I can get hit. If I try to cancel him into the frog, I can get hit because I unsummoned him in the process of switching what move Eddie was doing. And whatever I cancel him into is still going to take up Eddie meter. So we want to keep that gauge as high as we can. Okay, so there are some extra things I do want to cover for Zato. I want to talk about more advanced mix-ups. I want to talk about how he should structure his pressure. But I feel like we've already gone overboard on the time. This recording before editing is super, super long, and I don't want to put too much work on my plate. So I think this is a really good place to stop. I think this is probably enough information to get you started learning the character. I hope this was enough to help you understand what he does so you can fight against him better in the future. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. There's plenty more Guilty Gear Strive on the channel coming soon. There's a whole bunch of topics I want to go over soon. And I also want to do some Dragon Ball again soon too. So if you're interested in any of that, feel free to subscribe to the channel, ring that bell icon or whatever. Thanks so much for watching, guys. There's plenty more on the way soon. Thanks so much for watching.